Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to God is Speaking. Today, I just want to do a short little review kind of on the Life Application Study Bible, specifically the New Living Translation, the NLT. This particular one is from Tyndale. Um, I really like this because this is one of the Bibles that I use at our residential discipleship program for people battling with substance abuse because sometimes people may have difficulty understanding or reading and if they aren't saved and they've never really heard anything about the Bible, it can be kind of difficult if they um, didn't finish school or they, you know, have some type of issue with the King James and learning because oftentimes people have gone to, uh, you know, they've graduated from school, gone to college and have a problem initially with the King James version. So initially I like to introduce this new uh, living translation life application Bible along with the King James to help with the understanding, to help with the study. Uh, and this uh, Bible offers some study helps. It has commentary and maps and charts and different things to help a person really gain some understanding. But in addition, also helps to learn to apply the word. And I'm big on life application. So when we look at the life application study Bible, that's exactly what it does. It's good to be able to find the principles in the word of God so that those principles can then be applied to our everyday life. And so... Um, this is what it focuses on and why this Bible is unique. It says, what does this passage really mean? How does it apply to my life? What does some of the Bible seem? I'm sorry, why does some of the Bible seem irrelevant? What do these ancient cultures have to do with today? I love God. Why can't I understand what he's saying to me through his word? And what's going on in the lives of these Bible people? And so... If someone even may be saved before they even come into our program, sometimes they haven't really read through the Bible, so they don't have a lot of understanding. They only hear what someone is teaching them 30 minutes a week or whatever the case may be, so they still can be saved and not really have an understanding of you know, the Old Testament, the New Testament, what's going on. So let me just show you some highlights of this Bible, but... There's more to it than what I'm going to show you, but I want to give you some highlights, some things that, you know, are beneficial even in your study. It doesn't have to be someone that just doesn't understand the King James, but for people that are trying to gain some more understanding to study a little bit deeper and to practice life application and not just have knowledge, but to be doers of the word. So looking in Genesis, um, this is what every book starts off with it starts off with first of all what is called the vital statistics this is the purpose of this book which this one says to record God's creation of the world and his desire to have a people set apart to worship him it has the author which uh Genesis is Moses is the author the original audience who was this written to the date that it was written where it was written the setting it gives the key verses for the book and then the key people. So if you notice, all of this is for every one of the 66 books in the Bible. And then what it gives you here is like an introduction. And it lets you know what the book is about. Uh, it says begin, start, commence, open. There's something refreshing and uh, optimistic about these words and what it goes on to tell you is because we know Genesis means beginning this is the beginning of uh, the the creation it's the beginning of man it's the beginning of sin it's the beginning you know it's the beginning of languages it's the beginning of the children of Israel it's the beginning that's what this book is then you go on and it gives you um, a breakdown it gives you uh, the story of Adam the story of Noah it gives you the story of Abraham, the story of Isaac, the story of Joseph, and it tells you which chapters those are in. And then it gives you a little information off to the side. And then each one of the books gives you what's called mega themes. And so then you have the theme, you have the explanation, explanation, and then you have the importance of it. So what this has is, first of all, the theme beginning. And then it says Genesis explains the beginning of many many important realities the universe the earth people sin god's plan of salvation then it tells you the importance of it genesis teaches us that the earth is well made and good 
People are special to God and unique. God creates and sustains all life. So then it goes through each topic. In Genesis, you have disobedience, you have sin, you have promises, you have obedience, you have prosperity, and you have Israel. And so um, then it goes on after you read the mega themes. It gives you other information. In Genesis, it has key places in Genesis. And it gives you this information. It talks about the mountain of Ararat. It tells you about Babel, Ur of the Chaldeans, Haran, Beersheba, Bethel, Egypt. These are all places that are mentioned in Genesis. I'm sorry, in Hebron and Shechem. And then it tells you about it. It, it gives you exclamation. Explanations. I don't know what's wrong with my speaking today. But then it goes on when you start in chapter one, it just doesn't just go into chapter one, but it gives you um, what chapter one is about. A, the story of creation. And it tells you about what you're getting ready to read, how God created all life and, and different things like that. So it gives you an explanation before you go into the different chapters. Then it has notes in between. Here, Right in the middle of chapter one, it says beginnings, and it tells you the Bible does not discuss the subject of evolution. Rather, its world view assumes God created the world. The biblical view of creation is not in conflict with science. Rather, it's in conflict with any worldview that starts without a creator. And it goes on and gives you information that you can read and you can study because there's so many people trying to oppose. There's so many uh, forces against the word of God, but it still yet stands after all of these thousands of years. And so now you look down here, you have the commentary. And what this commentary does is it breaks down um, in chapter one, verse 11. You can see there's notes there. In chapter uh, one, verse two, you can see there's notes there. So when you reach the, I'm sorry, chapter one, verse two, when you read it, you see there's notes there, there's notes there, there's notes there, verses one, um, chapter one, verses three through chapter two, verse seven, it gives you notes and it's telling you how to apply this word, what it means. It gives you reference scriptures to go to where you see where it says, um, Deuteronomy and, and Isaiah, and it gives you verses that you can go to in order for you to compare, for you to reference, and so you can understand. And so it gives you notes um, that you can learn that help you in your faith and growing, that when other people are questioning your faith, there's things that you've actually studied in here in addition to the actual scriptures, but notes and how the scriptures connect and how you can reference. And over here on the side, you see there's reference uh, scriptures. And then here, it breaks down so many different things in here. Here it's going to break down for you the days, what was created on each day. Then there's more commentary notes at the bottom of each page. And then here you have what the Bible says about marriage, because in chapter two is when Eve was created. And so it tells you and gives you scripture references as to what God says about marriage. So now we're just in chapter two and you see how many uh, study helps are in here. Now, this shows you all the major characters in the Bible. There's a character study on them. And so what it does is it gives you information about the individual. This is Adam. It gives you information and then it tells you his strengths and accomplishments, his weaknesses and mistakes, the lessons from life, vital statistics, meaning you know, where he was, his occupation, his relatives, his children. And then it gives you key verses about him. And then it gives you some verses down here that also mention Adam. And so it gives you Satan's plan against us. All of these things um, are notes and commentaries and, ch and charts and information just up to chapter three, but it goes through the entire Bible. And so these are some of the things that I wanted to show you because these are beneficial in your study. Always reference the King James Bible and see, you know, what's going on. And what I do want to mention in this NLT is that oftentimes uh, people will hear others say, well, this isn't a real version of the Bible. It leaves out some of the verses of scripture. There are about um, 15 verses that are not written in the NLT or the NIV. But what I want to show you is that oftentimes people aren't looking and they're not really studying. They're just glancing through and then they listen to what someone else tells them. If you look down here, you'll see some extra little notes in here. And when you see these notes that are before 
uh, commentaries like over here, like right before you get down here to the commentary, you see these little notes here. So what I want to show you, I want to show you, um, I'm going to use Matthew chapter 17 because that's one of the verses that is not written in here. And people will tell you, oh, the devil wrote this Bible or some, you know, crazy stuff like that. But what you have to do is study. And that's why I tell people to always reference the King James. This is simply so that the English is plainer. This is plain English. And so it helps somebody who's just trying to learn. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I passed Matthew. Um, Matthew chapter 17. And in Matthew chapter 17, there's a, a part in here where Jesus cast a demon out of a boy. It was a demon-possessed boy. It starts right here where it says Jesus heals a demon-possessed boy. And it tells you right next to it where you can see this story in Mark and Luke as well. And But what happens here is that as you read this, it says, um, this man brings his child to Jesus, said, I brought him to your disciples, but they were, um, they couldn't heal him. So it tells us in verse 17, Jesus said, you faithless and corrupt people, how long must I be with you? How long must I put up with you? Bring the boy here to me. Then Jesus rebuked the demon and the boy and it left him. From that moment, the boy was well. Afterward, the disciples asked Jesus privately, why couldn't we cast out the demon? Then it says, you don't have enough faith, Jesus told them. I tell you the truth, if you have faith even as small as a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it would move. Nothing would be impossible. Then it skips to verse 22. So what's missing is verse 21. Verse 21 is an important verse of scripture. People will tell you it's missing. But in actuality, if you look down here in the notes, right here, it says 1720. Some manuscripts add verse 21, but this kind of demon won't leave except by prayer and fasting. Then it says, compare Mark 9, 29. So this is the thing is that when you see that there's a couple of verses missing in here, it's a study Bible. The notes are right down here. It tells you that that verse is there, but you have to learn to study the Bible and not skim through it. And you can't listen to what other people are telling you unless you're going to go back and check it for yourself. So the verse isn't in this part up here. But clearly, you know that numbers don't skip from 20 to 22. So you know something is missing. So look down here at the notes and see what it is. It's this verse right here that says, but this kind of demon won't leave except by prayer and fasting. So this is what I wanted to share with you. So these are just some of the things that you can find in here that would help you in your study. There's charts in here. There's comparisons in here. There's um, when you look back in the back here. Um, and you see how things are broken down in the back for your study helps. When you look at maps, like here, it tells you Jesus begins his ministry. It tells you where you can find that, which page is in, in the midst of all of these chapters and, and books of the Bible. It talks about Jesus' temptation and return to Galilee. Jesus first travels, the visit in Samaria. Jesus returns to Galilee. All these different things in here. These are different maps that are in here. And then it tells you about different charts. It, it gives you a study on Jesus. When you look back here, offered as our substitute, David prophesied about him, him as a suffering servant. And it gives you the scriptures and it gives you the pages. And so there's so much information in here that I could be here for a very long time showing it to you. But I just wanted to show you some of the highlights in here. So there's studies back here. You want to study on forgiveness? Then you look back here. It's as demonstrated by Joseph in Genesis 45, 17 through 20. We're on page 84. And then it talks about forgiveness. Understanding God's forgiveness should make us more willing to forgive. Forgiveness, rich and poor, both needed. All of these things, you could do a whole study, a whole word study, a whole subject study. By looking in the back, looking up the word that you want to study or the subject or the topic, and then it gives you a, a, a whole host of examples and the verses and the pages. It's like for a lazy person, like it's right there, like you can find whatever it is that you want to study. And then it has a small concordance back here. 
dictionary concordance where you can look up words and it tells you what they mean and it tells you where you can find it. Just like here, abundance, great quantity, affluence, more than ample. Then it gives you scriptures, examples. Then you have abundant and it gives you scriptures and samples. It means marked by greatly plenty and so abounding. And so where do you find that? Where can you study on that? Right here. And so this is the dictionary concordance. So it gives you um, a lot of information to study from. And so I really, really uh, recommend this Bible. Um, some of the maps in here, it'll tell you. You know, when Paul arrived in Rome and it, and it shows you the shipwreck occurred on Malta where the ship's company spent three months. And then it, it just goes on and it tells you distances and, and, you know, the capitals and all of those different things that you would want to know in your study. And tells you, um, like here you have the 12 disciples. It gives you information on each one of them, what their occupation is, what their outstanding characteristics are, major events in their life. So again, I could go on and on, but I think you kind of get the, the picture. You get the message, forgive all the shaking of the camera, but I really suggest this Bible for someone who wants to study and wants to apply the word because in the commentaries, it tells you in many instances what this means to us now in this life sometimes people will tell you well that was back then and it doesn't apply now but the commentary in many places and please understand commentary is uh written by people but what it does is it references uh uh it references other verses of scripture gives you an explanation of the verses and then it tells you how to apply it and so these are things that are helpful because life application is key to you being successful in your christian walk so, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for understanding for those that are watching and listening. I pray that, Father, whatever they're trying to gain in wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of your word, that you would impart it into them. Give them the study helps that they need, the understanding. We know the Holy Spirit is our teacher, and he abides on the inside of us. So, thank you for giving us everything that we need. Thank you for your anointing, your Holy Spirit, and thank you for continuing to guide, lead, and direct us in purpose and on purpose for your glory. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I would just suggest if you want notifications that you would hit the subscribe button and the bell below and you will get notifications when I upload new videos. And so God bless you once again. Thank you. And I will see you next time. Don't forget our wow movement that we have Watchmen on the wall. We meet Monday through Friday as intercessors, 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we pray on Facebook Live. My name is Tony Brooke Brown. And on uh, Instagram, it's Pastor Tony Brown. And you can log on, come on and pray with us. Amen. God is able, God is good, and God is perfect. So let's trust them. Don't forget to share the gospel with somebody today who doesn't know Christ. Minister to somebody and be a vessel and an instrument that God works through for the uplifting of his kingdom. God bless you, and I'll see you next time.